how does the rapid change in technology impact innovation? But first, my name is Amy, and I'm a technology addict. <laughs> but I bet I'm not alone. How many of you have a cell phone with you today? <laughs> is there anybody that didn't raise their hand? <laughs> With over 1 billion smart zone, smartphones worldwide, it's easy to see how technology has been embedded in our lives and how fast the technology is changing. Mobile devices are connected at every point in the digital economy. We see iPads, we see tablets, we see all kinds of technology everywhere we go. One of the recent polls produced by Harris Online Interactive gave us a little bit of insight of just how connected we actually are to those technologies. They asked people how, will, how, would, how willing were they to not give up their cell phones in certain situations. Now in cars, that's pretty understandable. 55% said, no way, I'm not giving up my smartphone. At the movies, 35%. In class, don't tell your professors, 32%. At church, 19 But I found the stat about restrooms, 15% very interesting. But it wasn't just the fact that somebody actually does take the phones to the restroom with them. What's important is that we have that piece of data. And that data is one of the largest, fastest growing sectors that's influencing innovation. Both the aggregation of data and the availability of data like we've never seen before. Data is now available where we actually can look at the user experience, where we can actually assess the human and the interface with technology. One example of data being used in, the, in a local professional uh, sports arena, they gave all of their, their season ticket holders jackets. And embedded in the jacket is an RFID, or radio frequency ident identification. Now the purpose for doing that is so that when they went, wanted to go and get refreshments or to buy uh, retail, then all they had to do was hold their jacket, hold their arm up, and they all would automatically would get the season discount. Well, that is great, and it, incre it increases the user experience for the season ticket holder, but what it also does is it gives the, the venue an opportunity to be able to do real-time pushes out to those seasonal people and be able to give them instant incentives and, and, and additional things that increase their value of their fan experience. But the other thing it does is it allows them to collect data. It allows them to collect that data and take a look at what are their buying preferences, what are their buying frequencies, and then customize their loyalty program so it increases the value of them being season ticket holders and makes them want to continue to be with them. Now in some cases, the data is the innovation. In one of our local startups, Munetrix, actually aggregates data, all of the data throughout the state that is important to local units of government. Then through a series of patented algorithms, they manipulate that data and they put it together in a um, uh, scorecard or a dashboard. And the local unit of government, it, it, government is able to use that dashboard to make decisions. They also use that dashboard to get the revenue sharing from the state of Michigan. They also use that dashboard to inform their public of what they're doing and what the health of their community is. But one of the other true benefits of that system is that it lets one local unit of government and another actually talk to each other. It gives them a chance to look at trends and to see what the health of the communities are in their whole region and how that impacts them and it gives them some way to communicate best practices. Both these examples point towards the fact that we are in the midst of a technology revolution where everything is connected, the Internet of Things. 
How does that connection, how does that connectivity impact innovation? What it tells us is that innovation is and has to fundamentally change the way it's done. In the old traditional way, innovation was a group of people running off and getting into a room and being there for weeks, months, years, spending lots of money doing research and walking out with a product that maybe somebody will buy or maybe they won't. Today's method, today's successful innovation is truly a collaborative between people and companies and businesses in an open and collaborative way to create the next generation of technology. Some of the most successful technologies will be those that actually integrate, techno use technology to integrate objects, to make those objects smart. The most, dis the, the most disruptive ideas are going to come from those people that can see the human nature and then envision leveraging the technology. In this case, beacon technology is an example of how that's deployed. Beacons are put throughout an entire arena. It could be this room. And then our ID tags are assigned to each of the seats. Or they use a low-frequency Bluetooth. But what that does is it allows the, the venue to be able to communicate with the person that's in the chair. So if I want, I'm sitting in the chair and I want to order a Coke, the Coke comes to me in the chair. <laughs> they're just beginning to experiment with this kind of technology in this fashion. And they're looking at lots of different ways. So if you want to innovate, here's an opportunity for you. I can hook you up. <laughs> uh, because they're looking at ways that are going to increase the fan experience, both in the, uh, the sports and in the entertainment area. Now, another one of our local startups has taken both the make the object smart component and the human element and put them together in one product. Now, in this case, the founder developed an automatic transmission for a bicycle. No more do you have to be embarrassed when you're riding up that hill, you forgot to downshift, you get halfway up, you stop dead in your tracks, and you have to walk the rest of the way because the bike understands what you're trying to do and it does the work for you. It makes sure that it shifts at the right times uh, so that you're going to be at a comfortable ride. But the founder wanted to do something more. So he teamed up with uh, some other inventors and they used Bluetooth technology to synchronize communication with the smartphone so you actually can program the type of ride that you'd like. Now, another aspect of innovation is the speed in which innovation is being done now. And the speed is just getting faster and faster and faster. One of the ways we're able to do that is the use of digital tools. So the process of going from concept to market. Digital, digital design tools will help us really shorten the entire development phase in the early part of the design. What you see here is actually a three-dimensional printer. How many have seen a printer? How many have been upstairs? <laughs> we have one up there. Now, they're lots of fun to see them make those little parts. But what we're really doing with it when it comes to innovation is you can make a part and get a near production prototype. What that does is that gives you the ability to test it, validate it, look at it, see if it fits, see if you need to make some changes, because no innovation goes out in version one, does it? <laughs> So it allows you to do all that before you invest in uh, expensive tooling or before you set up a whole manufacturing process. You're able to go through some of those, those um, areas so it shortens that whole development phase. In addition, you can even test packaging. You can make blister packs in the 3D printer, put them on, see if they fit. Maybe you don't like the looks of them. So it lets you really do some of that by specking early on in the program in very condensed time frames. As a result, companies are finding they can do more innovation faster and easier. So the research and development dollars and the engineering efforts that we're 
consumed by this long innovation process in the front is now being shifted towards the back where the value added is greater, and that's in the implementation phase. Now, another aspect that really speeds up innovation is the fact that you can get instantaneous impact, instantaneous feedback for viewing customers, find out what they think about your product. You can also get instant feedback from investors and from strategic partners. So through social media like Facebook and Kickstarter, one of the things it does is it gives you that immediate feedback so that you can take a look at and sometimes you want to make a pretty big shift in your product based on what some of that customer feedback is. So that helps you really to build out your entire business model canvas and it helps you develop a very strong go-to-market strategy. All of that is ensuring a greater percentage of success in innovating that technology. And last, innovation gives the opportunity to see through new lens. To see things that we've never seen before and to provide opportunities to innovate and come up with new ideas that we've never seen before. And in the end, where we are now is technology has redefined out of the box and no longer is sky the limit.